He's not afraid to bring out some new and fun picks like he has brought out the Fizz the last time into the Syndra matchup. That is larger wise ban away. I wonder if he is going to edge towards the Echo, which we've commonly seen, or whether or not he'll go more towards an Ari. But he may even go to something like an AD within his own region. He has played a lot of Zed and Talon to a large amount of success. <laughs> I gave you credit for the prediction earlier, but the predict Zed locked in for Optimus up against Bjergsen Syndra. That's going to be a fun matchup to watch. I don't care who you are. Zed versus Syndra, you get to watch the outplay potential. This is going to be really cool. Now, during the early laning phase, it is very rough for Zed. Right. However, once he hits the level 6 mark, the outplay potential becomes huge. You have to be very careful because ideally you want to use your ultimate to dodge the ulti of Syndra. I mean, that is her highest damage dealing ability. You can also use your shadows to be able to dodge a lot of her CCs and stuns. And with your natural mobility, you can dart and dance around a lot of her primary skill shots. And with her low mobility, she's also going to struggle to self peel against the Zed in these later fights. But Chen, remember that items like Zonya's do make your life a living hell as an yeah. assassin. A little bit difficult to get your damage done through that golden statue phase, but Biofrost will pick up that Braum for himself. The last pick on the side of TSM to go into this second game. And one thing I'm not expecting to see in this from Vettius is a level one attempt at the chicken <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think that TSM will go a little bit more standard this time around. Now, the bottom lane of TSM, they, they don't have the same sort of pushing or threat that they had in the game before, but I think that the Braum makes more sense in terms of the overall composition. What Braum is really good at is his ability to disengage and his ability to peel. So when you have two low mobility carries, having this Braum is going to make Zed's life even harder when he wants to try and get onto the back line. You also have a Nautilus and a Lee Sin sitting on the front. So every time he tries to go in, he's just going to get knocked right back out again. And it makes Kha'Zix's life that much harder too, exactly. right? Exactly. It's going to try to prevent Levi from becoming that monster that he was in game number one, not allowing him to be that effective as the fights go on, reducing how well he can use those tools built into that assassin kit. So the standard hashtags. I feel like the, the Gigabyte Marines may very well get a few more after that game they, one They had to have won themselves some fans with that game one performance, managing to take down a heavily favored opponent, one of the biggest League of Legends dynasties out there. And the Gigabyte Marines said, you know what? We don't care. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I love about them. The fact that they didn't play scared. They didn't show TSM a large amount of respect. They took a lead and they went with it. Yeah, they played against TSM the same way they were playing against the other teams in their group during the first week of the play-in stage. They just treated them like anybody else could turn the name plates off and you're not up against Bjergsen, you're up against a Syndra. Just do the same thing you would do against any other Syndra. And now TSM invading through the bottom tribe rush. Not really gonna find a whole lot of success there. Instead, get two hits on a ward and eat some bombs for their trouble. And the instant response from Levi too, gonna move in, get the deep vision around the Raptors so they can spot out where Svenskeren's looking to start his early jungle pathing. You would expect him to start in the top half of the map, given that early on, if you want to try and gank anywhere, it would very much be towards either the Syndra or down the bottom lane. But I feel like in terms of early ganking, we shouldn't see very much action. I feel like the TSM, excuse me, they just need to play things cool, calm. Slow and steady. Yeah, they have a great scaling composition around the mid game when they get the, the two item spike is really where their composition turns on. They can utilize the fact that they have a Syndra and Lee Sin as a roaming death squad because they're guaranteed to have push in the middle lane. We just don't want to see any aggressive, violent forces from the side of TSM because that is what cost them in game one. And the Gigabyte Marines were very good at punishing those small mistakes. Optimus just enjoying some of that level one Syndra action where the ranged auto attacks and the orbs together make your life pretty difficult. Yeah. It really is a, it's a tough matchup early on for the Zed. Uh, level two, he's likely going to get a shadow for a bit of extra range harass, but it's also his safety tool, right? So if an early gank does come in his way, he will have another means of being able to escape. You know, we actually see interesting passing from Levi heading towards the bottom half of the map. I was going to say, speaking of early gank potential, Levi now moving into enemy territory, thinking about stealing away Svenskeren's blue, but Sven heading towards that now might just discover him. Levi still has his ward. Oh, he's just lying he's just in wait. Going to wait. He's going for the cheese. Spin Scarin, though, gonna spend some time at Wolves. So 
Oh. Levi's says, all right, I don't care. I'm just going to start this up. But this is really bad for Levi because now Sven Skarin is going to be in a much better position. He's also level three. Well, will he be able to clear it fast enough? Levi needs to put in a little more work under this blue buff. Sven's going to be there in just a moment. Levi <laughs> barely getting that one out. He's looking for a He's trade dancing too. around. He wants He's to fight in. this. He doesn't care. Sven Skarin now going back in with Resonating Strike. These two are going to be fighting to the death. Sven Skarin taking low, barely getting oh! himself away. The red buff is ticking. And first blood to the Gigabyte Marines jungler. Two games in a row, Vettius. But TSM responds in force. This time Bjergsen says, no, well, this is not happening again. I'm I will shut that there. down right now. <laughs> no, stop it. Stop it. He gets himself the double buff. He gets himself the kill. And while they do lose first blood, the Gigabyte Marines, they just invested a little bit too much. The fact that Optimus could not collapse faster than Bjergsen is going to be massive for the mid lane matchup. But here we see Levi at this point, I feel should just disengage. He should just leave. He got the blue buff. He's happy. Both junglers choose to fight because Senskaran knows the Bifrost is coming in. And with the exhaust, he's going to be able to win that matchup. But Levi feels confident because he has Archie and Slay following up from behind. The big turning point is the fact that Turtle's able to get there faster, but in particular, Bjergsen flashes over the wall with the level three as well. But now he has no flash. Bjergsen has double buffs though, but not for long. Levi comes back in and Optimus is gonna be given the kill. TSM's mid laner falls. Now Archie trying to get himself then away from Garen's counter attack. Jumping back over the wall with the safeguard. He had Biofrost waiting just so he had that escape route. Buff transfer complete. Um, that plan. was the entire plan. It was all part of the plan. It was all to get Optimus going. We talked yeah. about these two being how they win games. Well, give that Zed a double buff, and that's how you're going to find yourself winning a game a lot of the time. But I love the fact that Levi comes back mid to punish the no-flash Bjergsen. I don't know how many times I've seen in the LCS, or in the European LCS in particular, where, like, a jungle will come mid early on, burn the flash, never come back again. He's like, well, I did my it. job. Yeah, he's just like, now the enemy mid laner has to play safe. But this time around, Bjergsen, he has the double buff, he knows he's pushing in mid. And then Levi, he just doesn't even clear any of his camps. He just makes the map move around, and he's able to get the collapse down. And then Optimus, he just picks himself up the last hit. So now he will be able to get himself level six first. He has double buffs for himself. He has Ignite as well against a no Flash Syndra, so I would not be surprised to see a return gank coming out from Levy the moment that level six comes around. Many plays to be made, and like we said about these guys, you know they're always gonna be tracking those leveling spikes. Levi in some real trouble though, gonna be caught out and punished as Bjergsen grabs himself a kill. Three and two now for TSM, two and one on Bjergsen. He's got 100% kill participation thus far. Now he's got himself a blue buff too. And now we're seeing a few mistakes from Levi where he's feeling a little bit too overconfident, trying to go for these invades without guaranteed push from both his top and his mid lane. The star could only just return to lane. Optimus, he was not in a position to continue this push because even though he has a kill and he has a slight experience advantage over Bjergsen, that does not mean he suddenly now wins this match because he's going all in. Bjergsen gonna be jumped on by Optimus who immediately bails himself away after getting shoved around. Deathmark not going to do nearly enough. Bjergsen doesn't even need to get himself all the way back. Instead, just going to go ahead, eat one of those biscuits, and hang around. Really subtle play there from Bjergsen as well. Note that the conventional path is you know where the Zed is going to land after his ultimate. He's always going to fall behind you, right? Which means that if you're Syndra, you just set up your stun to just hit behind you and land it onto Optimus underneath his turret. So Optimus immediately flashes so that he doesn't get stunned underneath the turret. But Bjergsen, he's patient with his stun and he's then able to try and land it as Optimus is already underneath his turret, but in a different position. So small, just outplay, a tiny yeah, changes just a tiny you make thing. to your game plan to make all the difference at this level of play. That's not exactly where he wanted just, to, uh, to go. Just trying to give him a drink. Yeah. Getting a little dehydrated there, Hansa. Take a sip. But neither one of these two really in any supreme danger. A lot of Doran's rings between them, though. Oh, yeah. Fellowship build coming into fruition right now. We're gonna have all the rings of man at this point. <laughs> We're gonna have something up there. These guys just making sure they're invested into that early game. 48 to 54 CS, both farming around the same rate as well. Biofrost in this bottom side river, laying down some vision, just roaming around a bit. Turtles just cool hanging out underneath the turret. Keep in mind, Wild Turtle does have that ultimate available. Enchanted Crystal Arrow can be used to set up those plays, but Mega Inferno Bomb also online for Slay. Remember what happened to Wild Turtle in game number one when he didn't respect the burst power. 
of the Marines' bottom lane. It's very true. It's very, very true. Now, Bjergsen, with Sven, is moving towards the top half of the map. Optimus is going to use this as an opportunity to try and push mid, but Starkey doesn't have mana. He does have flash, but no ulti. This is going to be a very difficult situation to get away from with the three-man collapse. Hanser needs to get himself away from the turret. He does so, and Sven Skaren grabs the kill onto Stark as now They'll put the pain onto the tier one. Clean dive from the side of TSM. They had river control. They knew that it would be too late for Stark to notice before they were able to get themselves the dive. And they should be able to get themselves the first tower of the game. Now the Gigabyte Marines, they're trying to respond by getting themselves the Infernal Drake. And they'll do so. But that turret first blood will go yeah. the way of TSM. That's a nice chunk of gold going into their pockets and they're 2K up. Oh, for sure. I think TSM can be pretty happy with that. They can keep sending Haunter up top, but now he has a little bit more freedom to make more map movements, right? Uh, he has his TP coming up fairly soon. But notice how Gigabyte Marines are using this as an opportunity to get deep vision down the bottom half of the map. They want to try and make a play towards this tower, but Haunter's already making his way down there. Levi trying to jump onto Wild Turtle as Optimus makes his way into the fight. Death Mark is used. Mega Inferno Bomb comes in for the help. And you can see the Shuriken on his head seals his fate. Biofrost is not there in time. And Levi, the blue buff bandit, I'm pretty sure he has stolen every single TSM blue buff this series. Manages to get that one as well as the kill, but Bjerg and Sven are here to try and avenge their fallen comrade. Heal used, flash as well. TSM not able to find anything. So TSM make the, the correct decision in trying to respond to the collapse because if Gigabyte Marines had stayed there trying to take that tower, it would have been a four versus four that Stark could not have joined. Bjergsen would have had everything available to him whereas Optimus had just used his flash, or rather he just used his ultimate and he lost his flash earlier on in the play. So Gigabyte Marines forced to disengage and TSM, they keep their turret alive down at the bottom line. Meanwhile, Haunter walks back up topside in just perfect timing to catch that entire wave. Turtle now hanging around mid lane, working on that Blade of the Ruined King. Morello Namacon will be the build for the Ziggs as per usual. Tracker's Knife with Warrior's Enchant done for both of these junglers. Tracker's Knife pretty much the staple of competitive League of Legends play, making sure you can get down more of those wards, keep more of an eye on your opponent. Especially for a team like Gigabyte Marines that likes to make these early plays, likes to get in the enemy's face, especially in their jungle, wards are so big. For sure. Now if you are the Gigabyte Marines, the best case scenario for you is to actually Get this bottom tower down as swiftly as you can because then you can move the Ziggs and the Karma to the mid lane to start dealing with Bjergsen and you can move Zed off to a side lane. The best scenario for a, an AD assassin is just to be free farming where there's no real threat. And you can just get all your goals haunted going. Oh, that was very aggro. Now they're going in looking to make even more happen if they can. Optimus goes down and Bjergsen goes up to 3 1 and 2. TSM is not going to be waiting around this game. They will turn the Marines' own game plan against them. The swift collapse coming in from Haunter, using its flash to lock down Optimus. And now they land a stun. Now Stark, he's in trouble. Sven Skaren able to go in, make the kick back. He dies for it. Mega Inferno Bomb comes in. Stark actually hasn't gone down yet. Biofrost in from behind, flashing forward, looking to make the move. Levi's going to grab a double kill. Bio having to get himself away from that turret. Stark is still alive, Vettius. But it ends up being a two for two overall. Sven Skaren tries to set up the kick so the rest of his team can get the follow-up, but Stark, he's so tanky at this point in the game. Graga. He's got three Dorian's rings and half of a hoodie. And he's just, he's hes a fat man. This guy just doesn't take damage, it's insane. Bjergsen does a great job though. He's able to pick himself a number of kills, four, one, and two right now. And we just see, this happened the earlier pick, and I feel like you don't need to go for this kick here. You end up trapping yourself underneath the turret against Levi, and also Bjorsen gets zoned out by the big ultimate there from Zig. The fact that Levi just goes in by himself, he knows he's gonna die, but he's like, you know what, I'm just gonna try and trade kills as much as I can. I have to get something back for my team. But wow, back and forth TSM, they're not able to get themselves that mid tier one, which really would have opened the map up, but now we see this shift. You can see Zig's being forced to move into the middle lane. Zed, I expect him to be down the bottom half, and they're gonna keep Gragas up top. Optimus sitting on top of a ward that he's not 100% sure is there, but dropping the sweeper. Now he knows, getting himself away as Sven jumps in. Bio and Turtle will not collapse in time. They have the range advantage. They're going to start putting some pressure down onto this tower. Speaking of pressure, Slay doing exactly the same thing. He needs to be careful. They do have good vision around the river. The possibility of a collapse is always prevalent, especially with Haunter having a TP advantage. Now, 
what I'd like to see from TSM is try and force a play knowing that Stark cannot join the fray. Notice how far pushed in he is in the top half of the map. They should look to try and get some vision so they can set up a flank around this mid-tier one. As Sven finally gets himself a smite. Sven smiting away that big chicken. As the TP comes in, TSM thinking about forcing something here. Haunter completes the teleport. Dredgeline not finding any sort of a mark, but Optimus goes down as he tries to make the play on a wild turtle spin scaring. Not gonna be taken low, but not gonna be taken down. Haunter is a raid boss in the middle of three men. Does not matter. They are able to find one. Levi's gonna be caught by the stun on the very edge. Now a little bit more damage to take him out, but the shutdown over for Slay on Debjurg. Two dead on TSM, but it's about to be three on the side of the Gigabyte Marines. Almost make it four. Stark and Levi still might be looking to make some magic happen here. Levi's so very low, but Stark wants more, goes right back into the fight. TSM will escape over to Wild Turtle, who this entire time was working on that tier one turret, gets another objective for TSM. And they'll go up to an almost 3,000 gold lead after a bloody jungle fight. So this time, TSM, they're in much more control over the game. They're winning far more of these fights. They just overcommit a little bit too often. So what we see is Optimus coming in from the flank. He wants to try and get the kill down onto Wild Turtle. He feels that in this situation, he's able to get it with the heal, the exhaust, and the power of Brawl. You're identifying why this pick was was being brought out from TSM as an answer. Meanwhile, Haunter, he just won't be three in the back of this fight. He knows that the rest of his team is looking to get the follow-up. And at this point, I feel TSM just needs to disengage. But Levi coming in with a very swift heal along with the uh, the dangerous game pass to give him a bit of additional health means that Gigabyte Marines are able to get a couple of kills. But TSM, they still have majority control. They get the mid-tower, they get the kills that they want, and they also have primary vision around this Mountain Dragon about to spawn. Mountain Dragon spawning. TSM would love to get a piece of that. They have lost control over every Elemental Drake in the series so far. Sven Scarin just going to go ahead and tag that one up with the Sonic Wave, see if anybody's hanging around. And now TSM will start this one up for themselves. Bjergsen, 4, 2, and 4. Very scary on this Syndra. Definitely the guy that you got to watch. Explosive Cask and Enchanted Arrow. Both going to be finding nothing. Turtle in some trouble. Going to be taken very low. Optimus evading some trouble with that death mark. As now he is down, but so is Sven. Gigabyte Marines trying to chase TSM away. Haunts are tanking as long as he can. Going to be forced to flash. Trying to escape. A nice Glacial Fissure. As Gigabyte Marines stay oh. a little bit too close. But Slay grabs the kill onto Biofrost. Levi over the wall. Cuts Turtle down. And Bjergsen goes down as two. TSM, one man left alive, and he is at blinking HP. The Marines will take the fight and earn the drink. And this time around, TSM, they were playing that fight so well, kiting back through their own jungle, utilizing the narrow choke point to land so much of the damage from Bjergsen. But then again, they just overstay a little bit too long. They do not expect the Gigabyte Marines to just continue with their fight. They stick on to TSM. They continue with the flanking. They realize that Slay has all this ranged damage that is continuously chipping down TSM, and they're able to win out. So you see the positioning from the Gigabyte Marines. And they're actually coming from all three sides. But here, TSM, they move backwards in towards the choker. Look at this great stun. Optimus is taken out of the fight. Archie is taken out of the fight. And Levi and Slay, they can't really get involved. And at this point, TSM, they just have to concede. They need to back away. They cannot stick around. But then you think, oh, actually, things are looking pretty good. They get stuck pretty low. But then here, while Turtle overextends, allows Levi to get the kill. Bjergsen overextends, allow a three versus one, while the rest of TSM are already looking to back away. And this is just another example of TSM overstaying their welcome and thinking that they can win these extended fights. Levi, 6-3-3, three, and three, another good game for the star jungler of the Gigabyte Marines. We've been telling you guys the entire time, this is the guy to watch. He works well with Optimus. He works well with the rest of the team, just making plays, doing everything. And this is why the guy is just a monster. Monster dropping the ulti onto Optimus. Now looking to lock him down even further. Bjergsen wants the burst, but instead he's going to be bursted very low. Zonia's Hourglass to keep himself alive. Optimus grabbing the kill with a well-placed shuriken. TSM loses one. Now Gigabyte Marines might lose their top laner in this bottom part of the map. Biofrost tanks up the turret long enough to make the play a success, and TSM will continue working on that Tier 1. Meanwhile, Slay takes down the Tier 1 on the opposite end. This game is just all over the place, Vettius. The Enchanted Crystal Arrow making its way up towards the mid lane. Not going to be finding anything. Haunter, the target. Archie not going to drop to that turret. And Optimus gets himself killed number four.
Gigabyte Marines are playing the map so much better than Team Solomidar right now. TSM and Vist, three members down in the bottom half of the map, trying to get themselves that turret. They don't realize that Slay, he's able to take two towers for himself That's in the top big, lane. Man. There was no one there to answer him. And the fact that Bjergsen and Hornsa die to what is effectively Optimus baiting them in, saying, oh no, I'm overextended, I'm just a little assassin Help waiting me. to be hit. But then what all do of I a sudden, do? Levi jumps over the wall. He gets the lockdown onto Bjergsen. They go for the dive onto the mid tower. And we're just seeing it time and time again. Gigabyte Marines are not afraid. This is a team that when they see a wall, they do not go around it. They do not climb over it. They charge head first, straight through it, and they are demolishing every resistance that TSM is trying to put up against them. And Levi is the man with the sledgehammer, just taking this down brick by brick. You can see the gold differences that flashed up there on the bottom part of the scoreboard for a moment. Another massive lead over his counterpart in Svenskeren is why Levi is able to do these things. We've seen since Svenskeren try to set up plays throughout this game, and a lot of them have gone awry. We haven't seen any of those huge successful kicks that Lee Sin is drafted for. Now the gold is still even. TSM is still in a, a reasonable position. The issue that they have is that they're one turret down compared to the Gigabyte Marines. So the, that series of plays from the Gigabyte Marines has actually more equalized the game rather than giving them a significant lead. So now that TSM can recollect themselves, they can reset, and the Gigabyte Marines, they need to be careful not to overextend. Oh, speaking of overextending, Stark trying to use the cast, but Spinscaren does a good job holding on to the resonating strike. Start trying to get away, but it's not happening today. Svinskaren gets himself in there, finds kill number three. So this time it is TSM that are able to punish the overextending Stark down in the bottom lane. They have the numbers advantage. They can start putting pressure down onto this tier two turret. And Gigabyte Marines, they're forced to not really have any answers. They've invested a lot of vision around the Baron area, which will be spawning soon. But this is a good setup from TSM. Hanser continuing the push, Svenskeren with him. Now, of course, neither one of these two pushes exceptionally quickly, but the two of them together should be able to do a decent amount of damage as the Mega Inferno Bomb comes in to clear that wave away. Svenskeren eating a lot of damage from that turret as he makes his way out. That's the problem of losing all of your minion wave at once. But topside, Levi's knocking on the door to the base. And we've got a TPM from Stark. They're just trying to stop the backs, prevent anybody from interrupting Levi. Monster gets himself over the wall. Optimus oh. grabs a kill onto Sven. All right, that happened. And now I wonder why Sven is even there. I feel like that we're a broken record here, Flowers. How many times <laughs> have we said, Sven, like, can we calm down a little bit, please? Like, the inconsistent performances of the TSM Dragon. Now Levi, oh, oh. No. Oh, invisibility right out of the brush. Look at it come back. Sonya's hourglass to keep himself safe, and Levi is forced to retreat as Turtle comes in at the clutch moment to make sure his mid laner does not die. But look here in the bottom lane, Optimus, the pressure is on. Bjergsen's now going to be forced back. The Ash Arrow is unavailable for Wild Turtle, and what was a good punish from TSM, they overstayed, they don't get anything off the back of it, and now they're the ones on the back end. Thinking about making something else happen if they can. That's the Marines game plan all the time. Always look for more. They grab the tier two and they get out. This is just such great play from the Gigabyte Marines. The fact that they have the Ziggs and they've made it work for a second game in a row. The fact that Levi has been consistently performing. Now on the Kha'Zix. Like originally he was well known for his Lee Sin and the Lee Sin. He's like, yo, I'm gonna add a bug to my repertoire. And yeah. Right now he is the bug in the behind of TSM as he is doing so much work in so many of these fights. Wild Turtle, again, this game he's had some solid arrows. Yep. His positioning hasn't put him in as much trouble as it did in the last game. Yep. And the team's been doing a good job to help him try to peel that Zed off when Optimus jumps in. But he's going to have a lot of work to do to help TSM win as this game goes on. It's still a very close match. Only about 1,500 gold separating the teams. Gigabyte Marines thinking about going in for this one. Oh. Levi is a miracle worker. Stark now into the fight. Optimus in the back line with him. Redemption going to be coming down. Stark goes low, gets bursted before he can be healed. A rampage, though, for Optimus. Can they make this fight turn into anything else? Slay going to be having a flash away. Optimus over the wall, wants to throw in the shadow. Bjergsen taken so low. The Rockets nearly finishing him off. 
TSM trying to get themselves out of this one. Haunts are the only one with any sort of a measurable health bar left. Jumps back in onto Levi, but now he's isolated and he is Achi. down. TSM is going to be chased all the way. Bjergsen falls. Bio falls. Sven is going to be next as Levi continues to chase. He'll cut off the escape route as Optimus closes in. Gigabyte, stop chasing after the kill. Go get Baron. Go get an this objective. This is for glory, Vidius. <laughs> he jumps over the wall and he's not going anywhere. Slay grabs the kill. They don't get the ace, but that's only because Wild Turtle just respawned and they should be able to get themselves the Baron. There is no jungler to contest them. Gigabyte Marines, these guys win another fight. They do it so well and they don't lose a single member. Synchronized backs, everybody getting ready to start the push up yet again. Sterix Gage, purchased now on that Kha'Zix. Now bear in mind that this is another smite fight that Levi wins against Ben Scare. He does not get kicked back into the rest of his team, and then Stark goes in. He's the primary focus. Optimus does his job because he's able to get the kill onto Wild Turtle. And this is where you think, oh, this is a little bit risky for the Gigabyte Marines. Why do you want to keep extending onto this fight? But just look at the poke constantly coming out from Slay and Archie. Optimus up on the flank just trying to do what he can. And the way in which the Gigabyte Marines just play this so slowly, they don't try too hard to force anything. TSM, they're always on the retreat and they don't have the mana or the health bars to really commit. So they run out of options and eventually it leads to their death. TSM have now put themselves in a spot, now found themselves in a spot, I should say, where things are gonna get very dicey very quickly off the back of just one or two more small mistakes. They've really gotta play a sound game of League of Legends if they want to stabilize here and not allow the Gigabyte Marines to make an even greater advantage out of this. They're now up 5K in a game that was much closer. They've got three Drakes, two of which are Infernals, thus even multi thus multiplying the damage from the Ziggs and the Zed and the Kha'Zix that much further. This is a scary situation. But let's not forget that we wanted to see a little bit more slow karma play, and that is not what we had at the beginning of this game. No. We had another level three skirmish in the enemy jungle. We had trades constantly back and forth, a number of ganks all across the map. TSM are not about playing this slow game, and I feel like that the Gigabyte Marines are just so much more adept at playing this fast-paced reactive style that is working so beautifully for them. This is like deja vu, Vedius. We underestimated Gigabyte Marines in week one of the play-ins, and now going into week number two, everybody was like, yeah, it's gonna be hard for them. TSM's the favorite team, and Gigabyte Marines is just stepping up. This team is just impressing and surprising and shattering expectations time and time and time again. And it's not just the Optimus and Levi show, right? Sure, those two are having a great game, but look at Slay in his performance, the way in which Archie's constantly providing the utility for his team and Stark with all the plays being the frontline tank. This whole team is just performing spectacularly. Which is exactly what you want to see from a team looking to prove itself on the international stage. As and Slay I say that. Himself, <laughs> hey man, he got out mechanics. Yeah, he Press did. R <laughs> win the game. Uh, it takes him out. It's one of the risks of playing Ziggs. He's a little short range. Or he does have a lot of uh, harassment and poke. When you get close to that tower, Bjergsen's iron you. He wants to see that opportunity, and he is able to find that pick. So this will stop now the pressure coming out from the Gigabyte Marines. They have been able to expose an inhibitor down bottom, but again, TSM won't lose too much off the back of that objective. TSM get themselves some breathing room, some long-awaited breathing room against this Gigabyte Marines push. Now they've still got that for another five or six seconds or so. Down almost 7,000 gold. One inhibitor exposed, but none down. That's the big thing, too. The Baron push came, and now it's gone, and they didn't lose any inhibs. There's not that extra pressure. Yeah, uh, but the sieging power is still very strong with the, the Gigabyte Marines. All they need to do is send Optimus off onto a sideline, who at this point can 1v1 anyone. Bear in mind, he's got two levels on Bjergsen. He's got an entire level on Monsa. He's completed both the Black Lever and the Ghost Blade, working towards his uh, Dust Blade of Drakthar. And such a sinister name for him. I know, right? And, and when you're an 8-3-Z, that's even that's, more sinister. Yeah, right? the whole thing's just a sinister <laughs> situation to have to deal with. The man is frightening. Especially if you are Wild Turtle. I mean, Bjergsen's at least got the Zonia's Hourglass. Yeah. He's got a barrier. He's got tools to prevent this. But Wild Turtle, you catch yourself anywhere near Optimus and Biofrost isn't sitting right there on top of you, you are dead. Yeah, no Sash will save you now. You will not be able to remove that death mark. But he still has to get the damage down. It's all about Biofrost's exhaust. Now we actually see Stark posturing 
Well, back, he ends up getting hit in the face by a ball. Yeah, good disengage from TSM, making sure that Stark isn't able to get in there, find an explosive task. Levi forced to jump back, Biofrost jumping in, TSM deciding this might be where they want to fight, but Bjergsen is down! That is not the way you want to make a fight happen, TSM gonna be jumped on! Optimus into the fight, Wild Turtle taking low, Haunter on the back line, Redemption comes in, and Haunter will not find anything! Levi again gonna be occupying three, and Gigabyte Marines! Take down four! Unbelievable team fight win from the Gigabyte Marines. They get themselves four kills. And Captain Flowers, I think they're gonna take game two. Gigabyte Marines are looking to push this to match point against TSM in round two of the MSI play-ins. Biofrost will try to defend, but one versus five is from? I don't think so. 2-0, Gigabyte Marines. What a game. Listen to that crowd. <laughs> you know, like at first people are like, all right, TSM, they lose the first game. It happens. They were a little bit too overzealous. They tried to make too many plays happen. And fair play to the Gigabyte Marines. They punished very well. Right. Game two, surely they'll reset. They'll cool down. They'll play a little bit more conserved, conservative style. But they still make a lot more skirmishes. But this time, it, it definitely goes much more in the favor of TSM. They have more of the goal lead in the early game. They're setting up a lot of plays. They're the ones now punishing that of the Gigabyte Marines. But when it comes to these team fights, the way in which these guys coordinate, the way in which they execute, is just so enjoyable to watch. And they, they seem to have TSM's number. Yeah. Every